This episode is sponsored by Baltimore Knife and Sword. I'm Kerry Stagmer, and we are the blacksmiths of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite things and fantastic objects you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. With the incredible renewed interest in Middle Earth, Man at Arms Reforged has decided to return to the world of J.R.R. Tolkien. Rick and I have been talking, and we've decided that we're going to make something for you that we make all year long a leaf-bladed elven sword. No, we're making orc stuff. Lord of the Rings, we have orcs, dark, twisted, evil servants of the Dark Lord Sauron. This week we're gonna make orc swords, me and Kevin versus Andrew and Gary. It's gonna be mean in all kinds of spikes. Looks like meat back on the menu, boys. The young guys are challenging the vets to see who can forge a sword vile enough for any orc in Mordor, with a winner determined by you. So comment below with your favorite sword, and let's get this competition started. Orc weapons, Kevin. Orc weapons. Mean, gnarly, cruel bleed damage. Uh, we got to consider who would have made this, and who we're making it for, and what kind of look we want. Orc scrubby and mean. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, they're they're not interested in pretty, they want functional. What's the gnarliest weapon you think we make at BKS? I would say the goat neck. Just barbed and mean It's as hell. just a nasty looking... You mean like that thing? Like that thing. That thing. So, if we start from there, I think this front forward protrusion is going to be the bottom half of our weapon. Yeah, that's the edge side. The main basis for this blade is going to be made from a railroad anchor or a railroad clip. It is about 1070 steel in high manganese. First they go into the forge, we do a little bit of straightening, and then out to the hammer to create a fresh new bar. To make sure they have enough material for what could be a rather huge blade, they're going to use two of these, put them together side by side, and then once they go into the forge and get forge welded together, they'll become one piece. Too many options? Now that's a good problem to have. With all these selections available to me, I don't have to be limited when it comes to character creation. I could be a knight, a viking, or even a pirate. The possibilities are limitless. Are you interested in or involved with stage production, filmmaking, western martial arts, or you just like to walk around rent fairs? If so, you're in the right place. Here at Steel Warrior Films, we use Baltimore Knife and Sword Company weapons the number one name in combat weaponry in the last couple of decades. The weapons forged by Baltimore Knife and Sword are the finest combat swords we've ever used. Their weapons have been used in films, stage productions, Disney crews, the list goes on. Baltimore Knife and Sword features hundreds of handcrafted combat swords as well as custom designs. Plus, they all come with a lifetime warranty. They have it all and they can make it all, so the next time you need a weapon, remember, Baltimore Knife and Sword. Now that we've seen them start, let's check in on the young guys. So, game plan, what are we thinking? Thinking it should be a one-hander and it should be curved in some way. Maybe something like a scimitar? Scimitar-ish? Yeah. Okay. So we'll do curved. I think we should be doing something like sand mine so we get a nice crunchy rot on the maybe, outside. Maybe it all be made of one piece of steel. If the handle's gonna be steel, we're gonna have to probably flare it out. Yeah, so it fits comfortably in your hand. Okay. Uh, sharp, slicey, pointy, stabby. And curvy. And curvy. And crunchy. Extra crunchy. Extra crunchy. All right. So here we go, into the fire.
Now that Gary's got these pieces forged to size, he's going to cut them to length. This is so that he can create a billet of multiple pieces. And we love the texture and look of wrought iron. But wrought iron doesn't get hard. That's why we've clad the outside of this tool steel with iron. This is all going to go into the forge, be welded together, and become one blade. Andrew and Gary started at different times here at BKS. They'd actually been working together for several years. It's quite obvious. Now they've both got the blades to rough form. Let's see where they're going to go with the rest of the pieces. You know, this is going to be our hacking end of the blade, and this we want something that's a little finer and to slash. Slashy oh. stabby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we continue on with that and something to that effect. Yeah. Maybe not nearly as forward. Of yeah. Like if we bring this point out to here. And then we sweep it back a little bit to ah, keep our I center percussion I down see, the Yeah, I see what you mean. Not so much of a uh, leaning forward. Yeah, yeah, that could work. I mean, we would a second spike. Oh, yeah. I, I don't mind a could, second could. spike. Could, Okay, now that we've gotten done with our heating and beating, Kevin did a great job and got to throw around a little bit of stuff on the power hammer. Now I'm going to get to the final form, do a little bit more profile, clean her up a little bit. Even though it is orky, I want to get a little bit closer to our final form so I can make it look really nice with all the grinding afterwards.
guard? Wrapped around your knuckles. Oh, D guard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna take the guard construction and do a, a wrap around the blade in a V. And then we're actually just gonna take the guard and uh, lap weld it all the way around. And it's just gonna be a piece of wrought iron and this will be our standby. So it'll be a rot to rot connection. We're gonna forge weld it to the back end. The reason that Gary now switches to coal is that wrought iron just forges better in that type of atmosphere. It can split and come apart, and if you're working in coal, it tends to weld back together as you work it. It makes it much easier sometimes to do traditional things in traditional manners. Now that we've got the blade forged and the guard forge welded to that, we're going to profile it before we go into the heat treat.
What are you thinking on a guard? Even with it being a half and a ha uh, hand and a half kind of length, I think something that looks like a D guard would mm -hmm. be nice. We could, you know, the old World old trench knife. Yeah. yeah. And then it'll get, and then we'll add some spikes to it. That's pretty heavy metal there. It's oh, pretty yeah. rough shot. We want to make this thing look like if you get nicked with this thing, it's going to give you tetanus. I like that. Yeah. Kevin usually handles most of the forging in the shop, but with this being a team competition, Paul takes his turn on the power hammer. Kevin keeps a close eye to make sure all goes well. Kevin spent most of his life as a trained farrier. You can tell when it comes to creating a solution like punching a hole. He's used to doing that type of work, creating horseshoes. He just uses the punch, drives it through, creates a perfect form to fit onto the tank. Looks like we've got a good chunk of our hardware started. Now we're gonna have to fit it to the sword and make sure this thing is gonna fit in there yeah. and not get stuck. Be up in here. Yeah. Maybe start our legs down this way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just gonna look mean. That just looks mean. It already does. <laughs> Making its man-at-arms debut, Kevin now goes to the induction machine. The induction machine excites the material and it will begin to glow red hot. For something like this when we're working, it only takes 10 or 20 seconds to bring that piece to forging temperature and there's no extra heat to burn you while you're working. So that guard does kind of look familiar. The peanut gallery thinks it looks like a chicken foot. Kevin adds this piece to the guard, they're one step closer to completing their orc sword. Let's check in with the other team in the grinding room as Andrew begins to ornament the guard and blade for this sword.
bringing the blade up the temperature, out of the fire, and into the oil. Now the blade will be hard. The blade's now finally heat treated and tempered and I can get to grinding this thing. Now I'm going to start roughing it, but I've actually got three different kinds of grinds I'm going to be after to be doing. I'm going to be grinding this reinforced tip. I want to leave as much meat there as possible, but I need to make it wickedly sharp. Then we're going to be going down to this falchion-like blade that I've got up here. It's going to be a little bit wider, a little bit more slicey-dicey. Then we've got this hacking bit that I'm going to be grinding, and that's going to be more like an axe. Now that the blades have been ground and polished, it's time for the acid. We use ferric chloride to etch the surface. It's going to show us the core steels and then the beauty of the wrought iron that's clad to the outsides. Both teams have decided to kind of make the same construction here, but the blades will look very different. Once Kevin got his pommel out of the acid, he decided he wanted a little darker finish. One of the ways that we do that is we heat pieces up with a torch, then they're just sprayed with WD-40 oil, darkens the surface, and preserves it for a long time to come. Forged from iron and the nightmares of men, these blades are now ready for battle. Make sure you tell us in the comments which one you prefer, and let's let these guys get out there and start smashing.
here to subscribe or click here to subscribe to Baltimore Knife and Sword. Click the video to see more here on the All Me Channel.